So you're getting into data science where hopefully you're about to make a really nice salary, but you're looking a few steps ahead, as you should, and you wonder what your long-term career path actually looks like. Keep watching and we'll discuss that. I'm Richard and this is Richard on Data. So this question, you would think, would have a totally straightforward answer. And I'm just going to get the cat out of the bag up front. It doesn't. The first reason for that is that data science is such a brand new field. It really doesn't have a long history that we can look back on, and in fact, data science didn't really get started until about 2010, so we're sort of in the process of writing our own history. And the second reason is that the field is so incredibly broad. What you end up doing will almost invariably be guided by certain principles, but from job to job and from person to person, there is going to be enormous variation. But then you've also got the people who think we aren't really going to have a career path because data science is just going to be dead in a few years anyway. I already did a video on that perspective and I'll have it linked below, but the long and short of it is I absolutely do not think that's the case and I think it'll be a completely robust field in the future, even if it might look a little bit different. Rather than talk about the data science field as a whole though, I want to approach this from more of an individual level and look at what you can reasonably expect your data science career to look like over an extended period of time. As a disclaimer, I'm not a career counselor or anything, I'm just a data scientist who makes videos and has opinions. So by and large, take this video as some hopefully helpful food for thought, some motivation, and maybe even a little bit of entertainment. And then before we get started, please subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so you never miss an update. And then take half a second of time to smash the like button because that really does help my content reach a larger audience. Lastly, I'll have a link to my Patreon account in the description. And if you guys would be willing to support me over there, that would be massively appreciated as well. Alright, so I'm going to break this into three parts the short term, the medium term, and the long term. And I'm gonna take the short term to mean about one to five years, the medium term to mean five to 10 years, and then the long term to be 10 plus years. So let's start with the short term here. You've landed that first internship or job, well, what now? Well, the first thing to point out is that the data science pipeline can be massively long. Your work may be limited to just a specific part of the process for a given product or project, so you're not necessarily going to be exposed to the whole pipeline immediately or even within your first year. This is an illustration from the Hacker Noon blog of the AI hierarchy of needs, and I'm showing you this because I think it does an amazing job of illustrating everything that can go into a data science product pipeline. And now at first, you might just be isolated to analytics and metrics with maybe some cleaning here and there, some A-B testing or algorithms here and there. But over time, you are going to get to play with the fun AI and deep learning stuff, as well as gain a deeper understanding and appreciation for all the stuff at the bottom, like where data gets collected and how it gets moved around and stored. If you don't get exposure to a growing number of things, you might have to change companies, which in fact is something that a lot of people do within their first five years. That exposure is incredibly valuable experience, and it'll give you a great idea of things you might potentially want to specialize in, which is a terrific segue into the fact that over time, you're going to build your technical expertise massively. I talk in my video about a data science study pathway that I recommend learning SQL first and then getting really good at either R or Python. Then after the fact, you can go back and learn enough of the other one of R or Python in order to be dangerous as well as build your experience with things like machine learning. And then those of you who've been following me for a while have probably heard me before rattling off lists of programming languages and big data technologies, sort of making fun of companies who have unrealistic expectations. Here's what I will say though. Knowing a whole bunch of programming languages and knowing them really well is a ridiculous proposition for somebody who's fresh out of school or somebody who's making a lateral move into data science for the first time. But over time, once you've started doing data science work in the real world, year after year, it will start to become a little bit more doable. 
Supposing, of course, you're interested in expanding your technical capabilities, which you probably should be if you're in data science in the first place, you're going to start getting better and better at your programming language of choice as you use it to solve more problems. If it's R or Python, you're going to start using different packages and doing things with that language that previously you had never thought possible. But also over time, you should get the chance to branch into some new technologies at the job you're working at. If not, that's probably a giant shortcoming at your current job. But even if that's not the case, when we're looking over the period of multiple years, it's not that hard to pick up something like JavaScript or Julia or whatever the case may be, start learning it a little bit on the side and maybe even try a project here or there. Maybe even at, say, the two to three year point, if you're thinking about switching jobs, one of the lenses that you can look at prospective future jobs through is the opportunities that job is going to give you to expand your technical expertise. But now let's suppose you do stay at the same company, or at the very least, you stick within the same domain. You might be going into that first job with little to no experience in that particular domain. And trust me, if that happens, you are not going to be the most useful person in the first few months. But you get over that hump fairly quickly, certainly within six months to a year. But the amount that you're going to learn about that particular domain within five years cannot be understated. Whether that's healthcare, automotive, finance, whatever that case may be for you. You're going to look back at your first month when you had weird acronyms drop on you that you didn't understand, and you're just going to laugh. And you're going to think very critically about your sponsor's real world experience in a way that other colleagues aren't necessarily going to be able to. And all of that is going to make you a much better data scientist. But also let me use this opportunity to speak to something that I experienced, that I know others have experienced, and that hopefully you will experience as well. Which is that you're going to see subtly over time, your role is going to shift from more tactical in nature to more strategic. Let me put it this way. Maybe you come into your company at first just to support a specific product or project. Maybe you function as sort of like a code monkey at first. Or maybe you find yourself in a large scrum meeting and you're just one of a large number of people who are in there giving updates on various tasks that are in progress. A cog in a machine, if you will. Over time though, you are going to gain significant independence and you're going to work on increasingly unstructured problems. And I think over time, your job will look a lot less like people telling you what the right problem to solve is and more like telling you to go find the right problem to solve and then to go and solve it. So let's say you're five years into data science. Hopefully by this point, your title sort of reflects that. It might be senior or principal data scientist. What exactly that's going to be is going to depend a lot on your specific company, but there's no reason at all you shouldn't have a pretty decent title by this point, as well as a handful of generous pay raises. And it's by this point you probably should have a fairly clear idea of whether data science is for you or not. Maybe it is, but only for so long. It's around this point that if you're going to make some type of shift in your role, it could make a lot of sense. I've heard of things like people shifting into becoming a product owner or manager or a software engineer. Now things like that are obviously going to depend on your interest and your expertise in the domain or the technical realms respectively. But if you're sticking with data science, you could probably become an organizational subject matter expert by this point. And what that subject is, is totally up to you. Maybe it's our shiny, maybe it's natural language processing. Who cares? That's on you. But I think even taking these things a step further, you can expect by this point to be either mentoring people, managing some level of initiative, depending on the size and the scale of your company, or both. There's a good description on Medium by author Jan Zawadzki on what a typical senior data scientist does and does not. Now again, the emphasis here is not on what the title of senior data scientist entails, but rather what your life looks like after you've accrued a certain amount of experience. He breaks it down as a data scientist who has mastered the art of putting mathematical models into production, as well as someone who builds well-architected products. 
It's someone who avoids logical flaws in the model, takes pride in preparing data correctly, mentors data scientists who are fresh off the block, but communicates about business questions to management as well. He says they're not expected to lead entire teams, but they come up with ideas for new products. And they know the details of the products they have built, but they're not necessarily experts on the overall architecture of all data-driven products. That's the medium term. You're a thought leader. Not the head guy in charge of everything, but somebody who has made incredible strides. And now that brings us to the final category, which is the long term. What does life look like for a person who's been a data scientist for more than 10 years? Besides making a whole bunch of money, that part is obvious. Well, this part is going to be highly speculative because on one hand, I'm not there yet myself, and there's very few people who have consistently been in data science now for 10 whole years or more. Though it is fair to say that there are similar roles that have migrated into data science over time, and that maybe have similar trajectories that we can look at to give ourselves an educated guess here. Your first natural question might be, what about the C-suite? This is from Maryville University in St. Louis, Missouri, and they talk about CTOs, or Chief Technology Officers. And they break down that some key IT areas are network architecture, big data engineering, information security management, security engineering, and web software development. You'll probably dabble with some of these and many other things in 10 plus years of data science. Then they break down that about five to 10 years of experience you can apply to a manager or director role, but that at around 15 years or so, you're fair game for a CTO role. But CTOs aren't the only C-suite role that's possible for data scientists. There's talk that an increasing number of CIOs are going to need strong knowledge with data science or to serve as chief data scientists themselves. That's going to bode really well for future data scientists who are trying to get these types of spots. Then, of course, the question's been floated before about, can a data scientist go all the way and become a CEO? Now, there's an article about this topic that I'll have linked, and the short take was, the chances are pretty slim, but it has happened before, probably more than we even know. Maybe the C-suite sounds too ambitious for you. You're not interested in all that. Well, you can Google Director of Data Science, and you'll find several positions out there that actually specifically ask for 10 plus years of analytics and data science experience. I really do think the sky's the limit on this one. 10 years of experience is an incredibly powerful asset for anybody to have. And if you did the grunt work along the way to make sure you were growing at the right things in the right ways, you can get yourself within striking distance of some incredibly lucrative positions. So hopefully, if nothing else, this video gives you some excitement and some motivation about what the future of data science holds for you. Now I have to stress again, as I have multiple times throughout this video, your experience may vary. And if your company isn't supporting you and growing the way that you want to, or it's super unclear what the horizon of, let's say, even a year in the future looks like for you, well, that's a big time problem. But data science is an incredibly broad field with tons of interest in it that's not going anywhere. Stick around in it for a while, and there's no reason to believe it's not going to pay off for you massively. So thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please hit the like button, and then leave me a comment down below and let me know what your career plans with data science look like. Then I'll see you all in the not-so-distant future. Until then, Richard, on data.